What's up guys? I'm back with another one like the other one, right? So this video is completely true. Uh, this isn't this isn't not a made-up story. And so guys, I'm going back and forth with like my uh, my mind and just being creative and using my imagination. And I, I like making up stories. So if I ever run out of true stories, I can just use my imagination to make up new stories. But this this story is true, and um, if you look in the description, I'll, I'll always say, like, if a video uh, really happened or if it's just something I made up out of thin air, but uh, this video is completely true. I'm going to change some names, so I'm going to change the name of the officer. Uh, the officer that beat me up, I'm going to change his name, and the reason why is because I've completely forgiven the officer. Um, for a long time, for many years, I had animosity and hostility and I wanted to I wanted to hurt him um, but I've given my life to Christ and I no longer hold any animosity because uh, it says in the Bible you know how can we expect <clears throat> how can we expect our Heavenly Father to forgive us if we can't forgive other people so you know we got to forgive the little things that people have done to us or big things if we expect to be forgiven for our all of our sins uh, from God so this I was 18 years old I had just recently turned 18 and I was fresh out of the juvenile facility um, living with my dad and living with uh, Robin Robin was there if you watch my other video you know about Robin they're, they're since divorced but so I'm living with my dad and Robin and I was my dad was always drinking and I was always stealing my dad's beers, right? Sometimes he'd give me some, but my dad's beers were very, very precious to him. Um, you know how like you keep your cell phone close to you and you, know, you keep your wallet, it's, it's precious to you? Well, my dad's beers were very, very precious to him at the time. He's since given up alcohol and he's sober now, but uh, at the time he loved his beer. And so, he, he would buy natural ice and I'd go in the fridge and I'd take one and then after I'd take one I'd get a little buzz and I'd get the courage to take another one and then by the time I know it I've already taken six, seven and then he goes and looks in the fridge and sees that he only has a couple beers left he freaks out well I was getting ready to go to work I was ironing my uniform I was a busboy at the restaurant and I'm getting ready and I'm upstairs in the, uh, the top bedroom and my dad comes up. He's like, did you take my beers? I'm like, well, yeah, dad, I just I just took a few. Because sometimes, like I said, sometimes he would let me have them. So you never knew how he was going to react. Sometimes he's like, oh, yeah, it's my son. He can have some beers. I don't care. And then sometimes it was just like, you stole my beer. So I, I didn't know what to expect. But this was one of the times he got really angry. Some, a lot of time, because my dad played scratch tickets, so many times he would lose his money on scratch tickets. So that would really dictate where he was at with his beers. If he was getting paid next week and he just lost all his money in scratch tickets, then his beers, like, he doesn't have enough to go and buy more beers. But if he's got money and he just won on a scratch ticket and he's got some money in his pocket, then it's, it's okay to take beers. But I didn't always know his financial situation. Sometimes I did, sometimes I didn't. Um... Uh, so, uh, he, he comes upstairs and accuses me of taking his beers. And uh, and I get melty with him, and I think I... I don't remember exactly what I said. I think I said something like, screw you, Dad, or something. <laughs> something like that. Screw you, Dad! <laughs> I need beer, too! <clears throat> and, uh... So, yeah. So, he attacks me... <laughs> <laughs> and my dad starts punching me, right? Boom, 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 boom. I mean, at, looking back on it, it wasn't even really that big of a deal. Like, my dad doesn't even really hit that hard. But when I was 18, I thought it was like a big deal. And I, I still looked at it like it was child abuse, you know. And so my dad starts punching me. And, uh, and ap <laughs> after he gets done punching me, he goes downstairs. And I had the beer that I took from him. I had it hidden. So I finished the rest of my beer. <laughs> And I'm crying, I, you know, I'm just, <laughs> my dad hit me, you know, like just, just, just being a straight punk. So I, I'm deciding what to do, you know, and I want to hurt him because he just, he just went up and, and punched me. 
And so my plan is I'm going to go downstairs and I'm going to sock him. Uh, <laughs> I didn't know if I was going to hit him in the face. I didn't know. I just, I just knew that I was going to go downstairs and, and do something to him. So he's in the kitchen and he's not expecting me to do anything. And so I can, I come down. <laughs> so I come down and, uh, and I go up to him and I hit him as hard as I could in the chest. Boom, I punch him. I said, don't ever hit me again, dad. <laughs> he says, oh, he says, I'm calling the cops, mother, <laughs> you know, uses the F word. So he calls the cops on me and I'm, and I'm in my head, I'm thinking, you just went upstairs and pummeled me with your fist. You're much older than me. I just hit you one time in the chest, but now you're calling the cops? I'm just like, I thought he might have been faking, right? Because sometimes he would do that when I was a kid. He'd make pretend that he was calling the cops on me. <coughs> but no, he really called the cops. So, um, <coughs> sorry guys, I'm getting over, over this flu. <coughs> getting over this flu. I'm battling the flu for like three weeks. Um, but yeah, so he calls the cops and the cops come. And the cops, uh, you know, they, they go up to him. They're like, uh, hey, well, tell us what happened. And he says, oh, my son hit me, came down and punched me. Right? And, and again, I'm still thinking, I'm like, what, what, are you going to tell them what you did? So guys, when I was, uh, oh, so my, my sister also lived in the house and my sister was like three years old. So this was what was going on. I didn't want to tell the cops. I, also guys, I might've been 17. I don't remember if I was 17 or 18. I, might, I think I might've been 17. So back when I was a kid, uh, my dad had hit me and my uncle had called the cops on my dad and the police had questioned me and I told the cops that my dad hit me. Well, ever since then, um, it caused this whole like child abuse thing and like it went on my dad's record and it, like it caused a lot of like uh, negative, it, uh, negative things to happen to my dad. So when the cops came, I was very hesitant about telling the cops anything because I was worried about my sister. I didn't want, I didn't want to say like, I didn't want to say my dad hit me because I didn't want them to take my sister away. I was really concerned about that because I saw what had happened like, you know, when I was like 10 years old talking to social workers and telling them how my dad pulled my hair, they, they, they took it out of context and made my dad seem like a monster when really it was just me being, you know, being a bad child and my dad just slapping me around. But yeah, so I didn't want to tell the cops that my dad had pummeled me. And the reason why is because I didn't think I was going to go to jail. I didn't think like, I didn't think by like, by me telling them that it would like do anything. So the cop says, oh yeah, yeah, I remember. I wait, yeah, I was 17. So the cop tells me, he says, all right, put your hands behind your back. I said, put my hands behind my back. I said, am I being arrested? He says, yep, you're being arrested. Uh, we're bringing you in. I, I don't remember. If oh, <clears throat> I remember what it was now. So I was 17, but I was going to the county jail because in the county jail, they had a juvenile section uh, for underage kids at the jail. Now they don't, but, but back then they did. That's what it was. So he says, all right, he says, we're bringing you to Cumberland County Jail. This was in, uh, this happened in South Portland, but this was, uh, they were bringing me to the jail in Portland, Maine. And so I start crying. I'm like, I'm going to jail uh, for what? He says, for beating up your dad, for hitting your dad. And I'm just like, and so the cops, and I'm still not wanting to say anything, right? So then once I get in the car and they're bringing me, I, I kind of feel comfortable enough to like to say what's going on. And so I said, officer, I said, my dad came up and hit me a bunch of times. And then I went downstairs and hit him. He says, well, wh why didn't you tell us that when we were at the house? And I'm like, because my little sister's there and I didn't want to like, you know, I didn't want some child abuse thing to happen. And uh, so the cop was like, well, you should have told us that when we were there. I said, well, can you let me go now? Can we go back? He says, no. He says, everything's done now. Now we're, now we're just bringing you to jail. And so I'm like, I'm so devastated at this point because 
I'm like, I'm going to jail and I was the one that got hit? Like, he hit me in the face. I just... So I'm mad. So what I do is like, and guys, I'm 17, so I'm still like 140 pounds. Very flexible at this time. So I like, I, I lay down on the, I'm in the back seat. I lay down on the back seat and I take my foot and I start kicking um, the, the cruiser, the, uh, the back window. Well, I, I didn't know that they were actually made out of glass. I thought, I thought police cruiser windows were made out of plexiglass. I didn't know that I could break it. And so I'm just kicking it as hard as I can. And then all of a sudden, we're, uh, we're on the highway. This is, if you're familiar with Portland, Maine, this is like going towards the main mall, going into Portland. Like you can go over the bridge or you can go like the back way, the back, the back bridge. That's where I was going. I was, we were going that way. Um, and so I kicked out the cruiser window while we're on like the little highway where all the oil tankers are at. And so the, um, the, the glass shatters and now there's a bunch of glass and I'm like, I couldn't believe I actually kicked the thing out. I, I had no clue that I could even do that. So the cop starts freaking out. He's like, oh my gosh, this is my cruiser. He says, now this thing's gonna have to go in the shop and I'm gonna be without my car. He's like, why'd you do that? <laughs> and I'm, like, I'm just saying, I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> so he stops the cruiser and obviously he calls for backup and calls for an ambulance because the, the glass had, um, had hit my hand and my hands were bleeding uh, from, from the glass in the back seat. I gotta get over. Uh, I'm driving to my Suboxone doctor right now. I can, I'm going to get my take homes. I gotta get over. Um, so yeah, so he calls for an ambulance, and the ambulance gets there. Oh no no! The, the, before the ambulance got there, uh, more South. So um, even though we were in Portland, it was South Portland cops that uh, that came to the scene. So a South Portland cop comes up and then another South Portland cop. So you got three cruisers. You got the you got the two guys or the one I don't remember, but the one guy who was taking me, you got another cruiser and another cruiser pulls up. There was a lot of cops there. So for the sake of the story, like I said, I'm going to change the name. We're just going to call the we're going to call the cop Jay. We're not going to actually say his real name. So Jay opens up uh, the passenger the passenger door from the back. And I'm thinking he's gonna like help me because I'm bleeding. That's what I'm thinking. I'm, I'm not, you know, I'm, I'm young. I didn't. I don't think cops are gonna hurt me. I thought cops were on my side. So Jay opens up the door and starts punching me in the face. Boom, boom. And this, this was a grown man. And this, man, this guy could hit hard. And he's punching me in the face. And he's saying, mother effer, he says, I will kill you. I will kill you. And he hit me about four times as hard as he could. Like, I'm saying that with all of his strength. And I'm I'm so, I, couldn't, I could not believe what was going on. I couldn't believe I'm actually getting beat up by the South Portland police. Now, all my life growing up in that town, I thought, I thought South Portland cops were the good guys. So here I am getting beat up and then the other cops there's like six other cops and they're all saying jay stop jay jay stop jay come on jay jay the other cops wanted him to stop they they knew that what he was doing was wrong and uh so then uh the ambulance comes and you know gets me and i mean i'm saying like i am beat up so then they they have to bring me to the hospital for you know do an evaluation and I'm in the hospital, I'm saying, I'm saying, Jay beat me up, blah, 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 you know, and anyways, so I end up getting a, a court case for this, and I had a lawyer, her name was Beth George, and I told Beth, I said, Beth, I said, I want to let you know, like, when this happened, like, the cops beat me up, and she's like, well, can, do you have pictures? I was like, yes, we have pictures, right, and so, um, and so Beth tells me, and looking back, I wish... I, I, I was so stupid back then. So Beth tells me, she's like, oh, well, the South Portland cops, you know, it's going to be hard to prosecute a cop. And, 
you know, I can't really do that. And so, and, and she talked me out of like moving forward, um, <clears throat> with, with the situation. And she had me convinced that I was going to go nowhere with this. <clears throat> I really wish I could redo time because I mean, we had a lot of evidence. We could have, we could have pulled the other cops and, you know, forced them to, to tell what went on, but none of the cops, none of them wrote a statement on Jay. None of them said nothing. Um, but if we could have subpoenaed them, they probably, they probably would have told on them if, if they had to, uh, get under oath and I could have gotten like a million dollars. I would, I would have settled for like 5k. Just, just let me go to the mall and buy some clothes. <laughs> but, uh, <clears throat> yeah. So my lawyer, Beth George <clears throat> talked me out of it. And, uh, and, and that was that. And so for a long time, like I, I had, I had animosity. I ended up getting a DUI. Uh, when I was 19 and Jay was the one who responded to, to my DUI and he, oh no, I'm sorry. He's the one who pulled me over. Right. So he pulls me over and the, um, what had happened is I'd went to the gas station, um, and I'd gotten some M&Ms and when I got back in my car, I, I had been drinking. I had forgot to turn my lights on. I pull out of the gas station. Jay, <clears throat> Jay pulls me over for, for not putting my lights on. And so when he pulls me over, Jay comes up to the window and I'm actually happy because I'm thinking, oh, all right, I, I know I'm drinking, but he's going to give me a pass. He's going to, he's not going to arrest me for DUI because he knows that he beat me up. I'm like, Jay, I'm like, uh, you know, like from the time that you beat me up, I think I said, can you give me a pass with this one, man? I said, that would be awfully nice of you considering what you did to me. And can you believe that that guy still brought me to jail for DUI? I was so mad. I couldn't believe it. Like after you beat me up, like, well, why not? Just, just throw me a bone once, man. Come on. No, he wouldn't do it. Uh, so yeah, so, so that's that. So then they bring me to the hospital and, oh, be, wait, why was it? Why, why did I go to the hospital? Oh, so no, this is a different time. So the, the DUI thing happened, but then another time, another thing happened where Jay responded to me and I was in the hospital and then the, the hospital has to transport me uh, to the jail and the hospital staff says, all right, uh, Timothy, uh, Jay is here to transport you uh, to the jail. I said, Jay, I was like, are you, and so when they, when, uh, when police have you, when you're being held at the hospital, they have to handcuff you to like, um, to the bed there. So I'm handcuffed to the bed. I said, Jay's here. So Jay comes in and I try swinging on Jay in the hospital and I missed him. And then Jay tries attacking me in the hospital, right? <laughs> and all the hospital staff are like, what is, why is the cop trying to attack you? And I'm just telling the cop, I'm like, yeah, we have some history. And, and like the, the, the hospital staff cannot believe that like a cop actually tried to attack a, a kid. Right? <laughs> and so, uh, and so that was that incident with Jay, right? So <laughs> here's where it gets a little bit more interesting. So I moved to California. Um, and I know I'm, I'm in my twenties in California. And when I was in California, I really became like, I don't want to say a hardened criminal cause I'd never really done any jail time at this point, but you know, a month here, a month there, but, um, my violence level had increased and I, I, I was doing a lot of bad things at this time and I was not afraid at this, at this time in my life, I was very depressed and, um, I, violence didn't matter to me at this point. So this is what happens. So I go back to Maine and I, I'm, oh, I'm there to visit. I'm there for four months just visiting. And somebody tells me, and somebody tells me about Jay. They're like, yeah, you hear Jay is, uh, Jay's a DJ and he's doing a show, uh, over here at, at this club. It was like a, like a little bar tavern. They're like, yeah, Jay's doing a show. I said, Jay does shows. I'm like, he's a cop. They're like, yeah, but he's, he's like, he's like part time. He does, uh, you know, he does shows. He's like, you know, he thinks he's the man now. Right? <laughs> like, I guess really what he was doing is he was just like, uh, doing shows at these little bar grills so we could pick up girls. That's really what it was from, from what I hear. But, um, so Jay is there. I'm like, really? I said, I said, so Jay is going to be at this place on, on Saturday. Like, yeah, he's there every Saturday. I'm like, huh? So 
keep in mind, at this point in my mind, I'm, I'm very depressed. So I go and I get a strap. And Jay hasn't seen me in a long time, so he doesn't really know what I look like at this point. So what I do is I put on like I put on a hood, I put on some clothes, I you know I, I try to like dress kind of like uh, like business attire, and uh, and I'm gonna go. And my plan is I'm gonna go to this place and I'm gonna shoot Jay. So I go there and uh, and I'm with this girl and I had met this girl online and I had told her a, a fake name because m the plan was she was gonna drive me to go to Jay so I could, so I could shoot Jay. Um, but if they ever questioned her, she wouldn't be able to tell them who I was because I gave her a fake name and she picked me up from a location that I wasn't usually familiar with. So we go there and Jay is hanging out with his like cop friend. So he's doing his thing and then uh, he's smoking cigarettes outside. Well, all of his like off duty cop buddies are there. And so I, at this point I realized this, this is gonna be like a suicide mission. Um, I knew, I'm like, all right, if I shoot Jay, these cops are gonna have his back. And I could tell like these, all of his little cop friends, I could see like under their vest, they, they were all packing. I'm pretty sure Jay was packing too. Um, and so my plan was when Jay went out to smoke a cigarette, um, I was gonna shoot him and then I was gonna run and hope, hopefully try to get away. But if, if they shot me, I was like, all right, whatever, you know, I'll let him shoot me. And so that was my plan. And so uh, Jay goes outside and and I approach Jay and I'm like, hey Jay, I said, uh, I said, remember me? He says, oh yeah, yeah, I remember you. I said, yeah, I said, I said that was, uh, I said, that was pretty messed up what you, what you did to me when I was a kid. And he says, oh, come on, man. He says, I never hit you. I, I said, you never hit me? He's like, yeah, man, I never hit you. Come on. And I'm just like, oh my gosh, I can't believe he's actually denying it right now. I'm like, and, and so, and so I go away and I'm heated, right? I'm holding the gun and I'm just like, oh my gosh, I can't believe he just denied hitting me after all these years. He's really trying to deny it. <clears throat> so that even got me more mad. And I was, I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm shooting him. This is it. And, uh, and so he's outside and I don't know what it was like something came over me and just like I got this like sense of peace I think it was God and so I got this peace over me and just something just said no let's let's just not do this and so at the last moment uh, I backed out and I decided not to do it I'm glad I didn't because that would have like completely changed my world forever it changed his world changed a lot of people's world you know who knows what would happen um, but yeah like even though in this video it sounds like maybe I have anim I don't have any animosity uh, towards Jay you know like I honestly I think in his mind I think that he told himself that he didn't do that and I think he's like completely just like wiped it out of his mind I think that like honestly he doesn't think he ever did anything or maybe he does I, I don't know uh, I, I feel like if I was to have a one-on-one -on -one with him today be like Jay remember when you were South Portland PD remember when you know I kicked out the cruiser window remember when you punched me I think I think he would say I don't know what you're talking about honestly like legitly not like lying say that I think he would legitly say I don't know what you're talking about and honestly think he's telling the truth I think I think that's what we're going um but yeah I don't I don't have any animosity towards Jay if I did I would put his name out there and I would say it but uh I'm not I'm not I'm not gonna say his name because it's, I've forgiven him at this point. So um, I don't need to do that. But <clears throat> that was pretty messed up of the other South Portland PD to, uh, to not say anything. You guys know who you are if you're watching this. But, you know, it, it, it is what it is. People get beat up by police all the time. Happens on it. I mean, and black people get beat up way more than white people. That's for sure. Um, in Maine... When I went to prison, okay, Maine is like 90% white, okay? The black population is not even like 1%. It's like 0. .00 something, right? Why is Maine State Prison half black, right? <laughs> Seriously, the, the prison is half black. There's like 1,000 inmates, or I think there's 1,500. Half of them are black. Why is a state that's 90% white? Why is half of the prison black? It's crazy. <laughs> I'm telling the truth, guys. Look it up. You'll see. 
Um, but yeah, and so black people have it way worse than white people. I've been in the car with black people, man, and I like we've been driving around in Maine, and like we pass a cop, cop just boom gets right behind him. Like they're so racially profiled, it's unbelievable. They ah, oh, they got it so bad. Ah, uh, man, my heart goes out to, to black people who, who have been falsely accused or have been targeted. That sucks. Now I see why they have all this Black Lives Matter thing. Because they do. They get hated on. Especially by cops. And especially by the jail system. All the prosecutors in Maine, all the judges, they're all white. There ain't no black judges. There ain't no black prosecutors. Come on. It's Maine. But, uh, yeah, I hope you guys like this video. This story was 100% true. Hugs, not drugs. I love you guys.